Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, okay. Now we're live. We're live. Okay. Hello. 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 Hello, everyone. Thank you Hello. so much for joining us today. We are here with uh, actor Rutanya Alda to talk about her uh, life and career. We're Coffee with Aliens at the Movies, a film review and film education channel. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing by clicking on the subscribe button which you can find in the description box below. And my name is Robert Bellissimo. I'm an actor and acting, acting teacher. I'm Stephen Chambers. I'm a writer and an actor. And our guest today, we're super fortunate to have actress Ritanya Alda, who's in Oh God. Uh, I'm going to list some of the credits. Uh, uh, the People Next Door, Panic in Needle Park, The Long Goodbye, Scarecrow, Looking for Mr. Goodbar, Rocky II, oh. Deer Hunter, Mommy Dearest, Amityville 2, Oh My God, uh, Racing the Moon, Black Widow, The Dark Half, The Stuff, I love that, When a Stranger Calls, on TV, Santa Barbara, uh, uh, Judging Amy, CSI, Law and Order, Blue Bloods, Working with people from uh, Michael Cimino to Sean Penn to Robert De Niro to Christopher Walken, Sylvester Stallone, Burt Young, Brian De Palma, <laughs> Robert Altman, Oh My God, it goes on and on. Welcome, Ritanya Alda. Thank you, and that means I'm old. I'm no, old. it means you're experienced. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it does. I mean, it's it's a long career, and it's a sure. 50 year career. So it's uh, you know it, it it it's just amazing that I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is a remarkable thing though, to have a career that long uh, uh let, well let's go i i want to ask uh from the beginning why acting what got you started did you have uh, was there influences inspirations why why did you get into acting i was i grew up in refugee camps in germany i'm from latvia one of the yep. three little baltic countries that got overtaken the war during that time went between the Germans, the Russians, the Germans, the Russians, the Germans. So um, we wound up um, leaving to go to Sweden on the refugee boat because the city was supposed to be bombed and people were fleeing and people were panicky. And our uh, little boat, fishing boat, got hit a torpedo. And so we were picked up by a big boat, by a big ship. Uh, and eventually wound up in the refugee camps. Luckily, the, the, the Germany at that time was divided into four, uh, four areas, the English, the French, the American, and the Russian. Now we luckily, I don't know how, but we luckily by the grace of God wound up in the American section. But it was a really rough because even the American section, the, where, where we found refuge at first was in bombed out buildings with no roofs. and. And, uh, and so we were moved, moved and moved until finally we got one that had a roof and was pretty settled. And anyway, in that time, the refugee camp was across the street from a 24 hour locomotive, coal running locomotive. And uh, we didn't know at the time that it affected your lungs, you know, all that, it, it still affects my sure. lungs. So I was a sick kid sent to a, 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 a place for sick kids in the in the Alps sort of sort of in the Alps and so I was like six years old at the time and and I saw my very first movie what was that it was a movie with I gotta remember the name of it it's with Paulette Goddard and Gary Cooper now I didn't know who they were at the time mm. but it was a western course I love, love westerns but it happened to be a western and it was in color and it was that went showing at the camps for the kids and uh, and I just fell in love with the stories stories I fell in love with stories and so I said I want that's what I want to be I want to tell stories I want to be in things that tell stories and so uh, that never left that was that was my that was like it for me from then on that's that's what i wanted to do tell stories so when i came to america later on in, in high school then i did all the plays that i could possibly do and but i always had a at that time new york was the center for acting yeah and so 
as soon as I finished school, I went, my whole goal was to go to New York. And I went to New York on $200 to my name. That was it. And my, my mother, of course, wouldn't support me because she wanted me to be a lawyer or a doctor. And, and she thought it was like uh, not a good decision. So I was on my, I was on my own. I came to New York with $200 wow. and I spent $100 of it on a, an apartment. <laughs> what, <laughs> what part of New York did you uh, live in? Initially. I live my, West 75th Street, 107 oh, West sure. 75th Street, between Columbus and Amsterdam. Now, that, now today, that's a hot neighborhood. Yep. At, that time, at that time, it was an okay neighborhood. But I was, I was uh, in a brownstone with a big, big, big room. And, and then I got two um, roommates. So uh, both of them, well, one of them was a ballerina with Mr. Balanchine's company. It's a big deal. And the other one was an actress, Carol. She's probably listening. Hi, Carol Maxson. And uh, and we uh, and Julia Frederick was the dancer. And so we shared this huge room and we, beds across, you know, three three wall. And so the rent was only thirty three dollars a month. And somebody Fantastic. else picked up the thirty four dollars. So um, that's and then I went to I got to, of course had to get a job immediately. And then I uh, went to acting class, started acting class and. And I'm, where did you start? Uh, uh, first of all, uh, the movie with Gary Cooper and Paulette Goddard is Unconquered. Thank that you. Been, thank you. Thank you. That, I, have that that. I have to remember that. I have to remember that. And what acting school did you first go to? How did you find it? Well, the first one I went to was the Dramatic Workshop. Um, was for Scott or started it, but we just yeah. went with somebody else. He'd already died. And then I, it was an okay one. But then the Lee Strasberg was upstairs and on the floor, a couple of floors up. So, um, so I applied there and I got in and, uh, and I studied with Lee for about, oh, I would say three years. Wow. And, then, and then I went to uh, Sandy Meisner yep. himself, you know, not, not a school, himself, Sandy Meisner. That yep. was the day when you got the teachers yourself. Yep. And then I went to, uh, Alan Miller, and then I went to Stella Adler, and then I went to my biggest influence in my life, my best two teachers. I went to Barbara Loden, who was mm. an amazing actress. She yeah, was, Wanda, the film Wanda she did is fantastic. Yeah, and I saw her on a, the uh, the play that Miller wrote, Arthur Miller wrote, uh, but Marilyn Monroe, she played the Marilyn Monroe character. Right, right. After the fall. After the fall. Thank yeah. you, Robert. And uh, I saw her, I think it was one of my first plays I saw in New York. And I was just blown away. I sat there afterwards. The theater emptied, and I just sat there, and I took in this, this performance of this woman gay that was so wonderful. And when... When I saw that she was teaching, then I auditioned for her and I became part of her workshop. She was the best teacher I had. Now, when she died, which was, she died too early and too young, then I went to her teacher, Paul Mann. And Paul Mann was, had been Barbara's teacher. So I right. knew the, the way that, that he was teaching. And I stayed with Paul for two years. Those are the two biggest influences in my my acting uh, my my acting uh, acting profession. And yeah. um, I, uh, in fact, I was I remember this very clearly. I said, "Oh, good, Paul is like seventy two. He's going to be around for another eight or ten years." Great! I'm gonna have. I'm getting better than ever. My work is getting deeper. My work is getting better. I'm gonna be so lucky for the next eight years. And then, of course, next week he dropped dead on a stroke. Oh. And I remember thinking, "Boy, things don't go like he planned." You know. No. I still. No. I still very sad about it. Yeah. yeah of course. Yeah. What. What did you learn? Uh, you know, you said you learned the most from Barbara Loden. What, yeah. what why, what was it about her as opposed to Meisner or Strasberg 
or Stella Adler that uh, yeah. stands out to you more so? She, because she was an actress, she, the technique was, uh, which she'd learned from Paul, because she was with Paul for like 10 years. What she learned from Paul was um, a way of working that was, that got you to a very deep and honest place. Mm -hmm. Her thing was, if you could just be truthful, even this much, that's where you want to go. It's certain truth. Now, to go through a technique and, and, um, and um, I'd have to be a genius because it really took me. Or I remember Barbara, my first day in class, she said, you're going to sit here and uh, you'll hear me repeat things different ways. But it's going to take you a year to really understand what I'm saying. You'll understand it up here. Mm -hmm. But the, uh, right. the, the nervous system, the, the system that really gets you to really understand it's going to take about a year. And I remember exactly 10 months later, I was two months early getting it. 10 months later, she, I, I sat and I thought, oh my God, the things that she's talking about, I really deeply understand. Now, my goal is, and I, is to write a book about Barbara and include her technique in the book. Because for oh, me, okay. to, to, to to uh, to summarize it, I I couldn't because it takes it yeah. takes time, but I am in the process of writing a book, and I've interviewed my one of my wonderful favorite people, my Michael Hayek, who worked with her and worked, lived with the family, and because um, she was married to Elia Kazan, and right. uh, and I told Kazan I love Kazan because I could tell him these things and he wouldn't get mad. I said to Kazan at one time, she's a better director than you are. <laughs> and he laughed and he laughed and chuckled and he didn't, you know, you tell most great directors that like the yeah. five of course easy or he, he's, she, he's a better than you are. I'm sure I, he would never talk to me again. It was like, it, it was, it, but he was so open to these things that he didn't judge me. He just laughed. <laughs> well, that's a sign of a confident person, yeah. right? Like they, 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 they get it. They don't feel threatened. Yeah. Like, oh, Hey, I'm better. Um, yeah. What was so while you're going to school, uh, these early days, what are you doing to keep your head above water? Do you have to work side jobs? Uh, oh or do you my God, did I work side jobs? Oh, <laughs> anything from being a taxi driver. I was one of the three women taxi drivers that drove at night. Oh my God, really? I got, yeah, I, I got held up once with a gun to my head by a young kid with tennis shoes. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. God. And it, it was very dangerous at the time that I drove. It was in the 70s. And yeah, yeah, New York was a different place. Yeah. Yeah. He drove with De Niro, right? But a female. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 A lot of taxi stories. And believe me, that wonderful uh, that wonderful uh, thing with uh, Danny, uh, what's his name? This, that taxi uh, series with. Yes. Yeah. Oh, uh, it, taxi, yeah. Uh, yeah. It, Danny. D DeVito, DeVito. DeVito, yeah. Right. I think it's just called Taxi, yeah. Yeah, it was nothing like, nothing no. like <laughs> driving. It was such a glamorized view of taxi drivers. It was oh, like, yeah, of course. It was network TV. They couldn't do, like, <laughs> taxi driver. You couldn't hang out. You got your cab because every second counted. But you know who drove in the same garage that I did was Oliver Stone. Oh, my God, and really? Oliver Stone. But he didn't drive very long. And I didn't really get to know him. Uh, but he drove for a while there. I think he got a writing gig or something happened really quick. From, but the time when I drove, because the city was very depressed, a lot of people were out of work, like professors yeah. and engineers, people like that were out of work, as well as actors. <laughs> and uh, But it was uh, grueling. The, the first time I drove, and I, I was lived in a three-story walk-up, I had to crawl up the stairs. I was so because your body is so contained and, mm. and right. you drive, you had to drive for 12 hours at the time to make a living. You just had to drive for 12 hours. Oh. And, um, and I, I didn't think I'd make it. And then I went back and gradually your body adjusts and you find ways. Yeah. Then I found a great guy, Pilates guy, Bob Seed. He's dead now. Everybody's dead. It's like, mm -hmm. it's like depressing. All my, all these people I found, I'm, I've, I've outlived them, which is like, but he <laughs> would work with me and he would, he would, he, he was like a 
sergeant. He, he right. Yeah, you, know, you know, I'm gonna do, I'm do this. Now, let's do this more. Do and do, 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 do this. No, you have enough, enough, enough. You gotta go. So I, but I loved him. <laughs> it's like sure. my, body, my body felt better working with him. Yeah, so, it worked. <laughs> then I did um, like temporary, um, temporary jobs. One of them was handing out candy in Newark, New Jersey. That that's stuff that really sticks to your sticks to your teeth. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. like taffy. Yeah, that, yeah, that really awful stuff. And I felt awful handing it out to people. <laughs> Sometimes I'd say to the little kids, "You don't, you don't want this. This is bad for your teeth." So that lasted a little while, not too long. And then I would do secretarial firing sure. stuff, and and I worked for the convention bureau. Conventions were coming in at that time, right? Uh, and I, they needed people to check in and give information and stuff like that. So I mean, just all kinds of jobs. I was all, always without money. Really, honestly, I just sure. didn't have money. It was like every month was a stretch. <laughs> right. And then, and then I started working background, and that really helped me. Okay. Uh, extra work. Yeah. Uh, and that really got me out of the, uh, you know, the grind of having to work on these kind of jobs. So I enjoyed mm -hmm. background. It, it paid fine. It was, sure. it was way better than the, than the jobs I was having. And it just um, made me realize I was part of an industry. Yeah, now, yeah. A, a lot of people at that time looked down on background work. And they thought, well, once you do background work, you're just a background person. You're right. called extra, which is really right. not a good way to look at it because you're part of a community mm -hmm. and you're important to that movie. Oh, you sure. Set, you set the atmosphere. You set the atmosphere for that movie and, and you could, you contribute to that movie. And so that's how it started. I did a lot of background work. And I did stand in, like I did stand in for Mia Farrow for Rosemary Baby. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh my God. And you photo, were on that set. photo doubling, because the opening shot was shot from the roof down to two people yep. walking in the white coat. That's me. So the long shots are are me. And of course, then then Mia did all the you know wonderful acting that she did. Sure. And uh, and I learned a lot from the cinematographer on that on that uh set he was very helpful you know he would tell me things and then uh then i did other stand-ins but that was probably the most important movie that i did i did stood in for catherine Junu for april fools with jack lemon i, I just that. saw that movie that's so yeah, funny just a oh, wow. so she has some and there was water. barbara streisand as well right for hello dolly oh my god yes I was Barbara Streisand. I just saw that movie. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> the long shots with that pretty beautiful kind of a dress tapestry. Sure. Dress. The long oh, shots. wow. Only, only the long shots. And then yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the train shot, you know, and stuff. But, yeah. but I put in for her and the photo doubled for her. So, right, right. And, uh, and I photo doubled for Anne Francis in uh, Funny Girl. Yeah. So right. I stood, stand in for her and photo doubled for her. She was a lovely woman. And, um, I think those are like the major films that those I. Those are seen. huge. Yeah. Those are iconic, <laughs> iconic movies. Did you have a uh, like for like I, I do background and stand in work as well. Uh, like here in Toronto, there are specific agents for that for that work. Did you have like a specific uh, background agent, or how did you get that those jobs? Yes, there was there were um, there was a big two big background agencies at the time that are no longer in business uh other people have taken over but they they would uh hire me a lot because i really worked hard. i was show because the main thing as you know is showing up on time showing up a little yeah. early, oh, show yeah. up a little early and, yeah. then, and then you know just be there and be available and i always my thing was i, I was always kept interested in what what was going on so that i just didn't sit there and read a book uh, right, right. Uh, I, I, I really looked and was curious about what, how they set this up. And how, so uh, I think that's a good attitude if you're a background person because absolutely because that involves well, you so more. Much. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I learned a lot too, and it kind of yeah. gives you confidence when you go on a set. 
Yes. And you've been on a lot of sets, so you're not. This is not right. your first time at the rodeo, so to speak. You know? And you understand the language too. Yes. Like I think a lot of actors, if they uh, haven't done background work or photo doubling, and then they get on set and they don't know what like uh, 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 AD means, or they don't know what second team yeah. means, and then they're yeah. just trying to put it all together. But if you already know that, it's a little easier for me, it's anyways. Easier. I don't know if you found that, Ritania. It, it, <laughs> it, it's definitely easier. And you know yeah. what? It's nice to be nice to the person that's standing in for you. Yeah. I always try yeah. to be uh, thankful that they're there because they save you a little time. That means I can go over my lines more. I can, you know, concentrate when I get on. And and uh, and so I'm always I was grateful to, to uh, people that did that. Uh, I had to stand in in um, uh, Law and Order CI, and uh, she was a lovely woman. And apparently they were going to. Uh, they were going to use different stand-ins for different days. And I said, no, I, I really like her. She's lovely. And then she came up well, to that's me. Nice to she said, she came up to me afterwards. She said, thank you, thank you, because I really need yep. the work. They need the work, said, exactly. Yes, you do. Okay, why change? Yep. You know, you're a lovely woman, and I appreciate you. So, yeah. uh, so I have a real appreciation for people that mm -hmm. work uh, on the film because it truly is a collaboration. People, it's not just about you, right. me, 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 and and yeah. and I think there's a, a I, I I feel like a lot of it now is it's all about me. And it isn't about you. It isn't really about you. It's about everyone mm -hmm. that contributes to this story. Yeah, right. That's right. Right, absolutely. Um, that's very well said. Now, how yeah. did you then transition into, you know, speaking parts, uh, actor roles? You know, the first um, speaking part I had was really on Rosemary's Baby, even though you don't see me. I'm the... The voice. The doctor, voice yeah. I'm, I'm the voice of the doctor on when she's on the phone. Yes. Right. To the doctor, I'm the voice. And uh, that's really my first speaking role was that. Oh, wow. And then um, then by accident, and you know, this is where fate comes in and forces a line kind of to, to you don't know what, why, what happened. I was making rounds because I would, this is when you could make rounds. Now in New York, you cannot make rounds. Right. I, I would get up, I would get up a little, uh, I would. I was working waitressing at the time, uh -huh. and I wouldn't get. Home, I wouldn't get off till four a.m. By the time I took the train home, it was five a.m. I'd go to sleep. I would make myself get up, and by eleven, and get out and spend the whole afternoon, uh, you know, making rounds, dropping off pictures, uh, saying hi, and then I'd go to work at four. No, I'd go to work at six. I'm sorry. So I, I would until six o'clock. Well, every the office is closed at five, so I had a little time after that. Every day I did this for years. So, wow. uh, so I mean, I just made, and I was so tired most of the time. All weekends I would sleep in. As sleep. Much as I but um, it was a time when you could do that. You could meet an agent. You could go to producers. One of the I've got to share this with you because. I'm making rounds. One time I, I read, because I, I was reading who was filming and who the producer, the director was. And the director at the time was Arnold Schulman on this movie that I did. And um, I had seen Arnold Schulman's movie, A Love with a Proper Stranger with Natalie Wood. And, and uh, Steve McQueen. Oh, oh, yeah, I love that movie. I love that movie. So, yeah. um, so I said, oh, my God, Arnold Schulman is directing this movie. Uh, oh, I've got to get a picture and resume to him. So I was making rounds. What I found, I looked up his address. It was at that time 857th Avenue and his office address. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, let me just go and drop off a picture and see what happens. And somebody had given me like a big lollipop. One of the friends I met had said, oh, what I was making rounds at, had said big lollipop with me. And so I I knocked on Mr. Shulman's door and he opened it, but I didn't realize it was like an office. He was meditating. It was a big meditating space. He had his little 
Japanese robe on, and he there's incense and the thing. I, you know, it's the open door. I got a view of, oh my God, this isn't like an office, and I've intruded on his meditation. I felt really I, nervous. So <laughs> first thing I thought of, here's a lollipop for you, Mr. Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and they said, well, thank you very much. And then I said, well, I'm an actress, and here's my picture and resume, and I hear you're doing a film, and, you know, maybe I can read for you. And he said, well, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, he had me in. Oh. And I got a little part in that movie. And uh, so those are the years that no longer exist. Right. No longer exist. Most, most people were very gracious about it. they take the, the picture. I remember... Uh, Oh, who was that wonderful man that got blacklisted that wrote so many? He, oh he, gosh, he, he wrote Johnny, but Johnny in the War, where the man was all. Oh, I know. Oh, 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 oh. oh. it's at the oh. tip of my tongue. It's on the they tip. They did a of movie on it with Brian Cranston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, that's wow. right about him, Dalton Trumbo. Yes. Dalton Trumbo. That's okay. right. <laughs> I, I, he was in town doing his his movie and and i i waited for him waited for him and gave him my picture and resume and he was so gracious about it he was so lovely you know the bigger the person is i found the more gracious they are mm. that, again that, because they have nothing to prove right i think yeah. people can be nasty when yeah. they want the world to know i'm important but yeah. if you are a big deal I don't think you feel the need to prove it. And yeah, I've found with the few people I've talked to, they're very nice. Like, they're nice people, gracious. Yeah, nice. gracious, I, I, yeah. And, and so the, the bigger the people, the only person that was really nasty to me was that man, I blocked his name out of my mind. He, he makes all these kind of improv movies and he made one with Orson Welles in the late 60s, early 70s. Oh, Robert, you'll know. Who, who? Uh, I, I think it's I think it's who we, we actually had on another director who talked about him. Uh, John Gallagher talked uh, about this. I think I know uh, he, he has an on Henry Jaglom, is it? Yeah, Jaglom. Yeah, I thought oh, so. You guys are so <laughs> great. Oh, you guys are so great. Well, I remember his face. <laughs> His nasty little face when he we've was, you're not the first to say that on our yeah. show. I, he was good. He had an, he actually had an office, so I wasn't like Arnold Shulman where I intruded on his face. But he's I dropped him off a picture, and he said, "How dare you? How dare you drop a picture off? Really? You know, how, get, get out of here! How dare you?" I felt really I'm sh wow so shocked. Yeah. And so he's the only one that I remember that was really, really mean to me. And, and I was just a young kid in my 20s, I think. So, yeah. yeah. But I don't mind naming names now to people that were really nasty. Oh, no, good. <laughs> that was yeah. Again, you're not the first to talk about Henry yeah, Jaguar. Yeah, someone else mentioned him. So that, there you go. Yeah, we, we, <laughs> we've heard about this guy. We, you know, I never would ever, ever work for him because uh, not that I would, because obviously I, I'm not, I have no interest in working for him. But uh, God bless him and his nastiness. Anyway, oh, anyway, that's uh, nice of you still. <laughs> to do that to an actor is like, yeah. the actor's looking, just just take your picture and say, yeah. I don't, I'll see. Well, you know, pass it on, whatever. But, um, but, that's how I started out. And then, oh, this is where getting back to how accidents happen. Yeah. So I was making rounds and some a friend of mine, Vincent, he said, I just was at this guy's, uh, he's holding some auditions and he wants people that like to do improv. And I know you're good at improv. I had done some improv. I had fun. I love improv. He said, he's looking for people that could do improv. And to go over there, his name is Brian De Palma. So I said, oh, good, thanks. I'll go over there right away. So I went over there and the uh, door was, you know, it was like an open door. You didn't have to. So I just waited next. And I said, well, I'm, I'm good at improv. He said, let's see. Let's, let's play around a little bit. So I played around a little bit. And he said, that's great. You're great. Um, so I think the part, there's the part in this movie for you called Readings. Yep, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the young De Niro. So that's where I met Bobby on Green because yeah. we had this two scenes together, this two yep. funny scenes. Yeah. And, <laughs> and they just they just played it uh, last year at downtown at that theater, the wonderful theater. God, I can't remember the names of things. But um, 
Metrograph, the Metrograph. Okay. And they had a special screening for uh, greetings, and the place was pretty packed with young kids. So I thought, oh. hey, I hadn't seen this movie in how many years? 30 years, maybe? I said, I wonder if it's going to hold up, and I wonder if people are going to laugh. Well, it did hold up, and people laughed like crazy at that strip scene. They were, they were, they were oh, laughing. Yeah. I thought, oh, this is great. This works. So, uh, so uh, that was, the, and that. So anyway, that's how I got to know Brian. And then the second film, uh, Pi Mom, was Pi Mom. Yeah. Was was by the way, I ran into uh, Quentin Tarantino last year. Uh, he, we were, he was up, you know, doing the Academy rounds and his screening. And, and um, so Quentin says to me, Ratanya, you're in the best scene in film history. And I went like, what is he talking about? What does he mean with the best scene in film history? He's, and I, he, I had this, must have had this puzzled look on my face. He said, the B Black Baby yes. scene in High Mom <laughs> I knew is it. the best yeah, scene I knew it, yeah. in film history. I was like, ooh. I was speechless. Good thing my girlfriend Donna Dickman was with me. Otherwise, nobody would have believed that this. She was with <laughs> me, and and uh, and I thought, okay, I'm going to put this on I I M D quote down on my yeah, I saw it last night. Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent, 100 percent. How did they shoot that, Ratanya? Because I know it was it was improvised, right? So what did yeah. you know before the cameras rolled? It's about these these people going to the theater. That no matter how bad or how how maybe you violated, you're gonna feel because a critic said that this is great theater. These people are gonna go because the critic said uh, that this is good. So we're we're going to go up there the journey to see this show called Be Like Baby, and we have no idea. Brian just said, you know, just react how we're what, we're gonna have things happen, and you react. So Quentin was shocked, shocked that we filmed that scene. And it was a one take, and we filmed that scene in probably an hour. Wow! And Brian had found this because at that time he didn't. We didn't have much money. There was no money. Right. He found this building, this kind of a in the West Sixties that his friend had was a super on. It was like an industrial kind of building. Mm -hmm. So we had like an afternoon there. He snuck us the, the his friend just opened up the building for us and didn't tell anyone. And so he snuck us in and we started the improv. And that was the improv. And it had to be one take because we had no luxury of going and, and reshooting. It wasn't a right. studio, it was a real set. And so uh that was the scene that came out of there. That was the that wow. was the and even because because at one point like the, one of the guys like takes your clothes off and everything right yeah, so, you, you, so you didn't even know that that was like it just no, happened it happened wow. oh my yeah. god no. the scene, the that, scene. That, I find it, that scene terrifying it's a it, scary it, scene. It, um the guy that reviewed Richard Schickel reviewed for yep. Life magazine oh yeah wrote a whole article about how great the scene was and so um I mean that's the, that's basically the film is that scene and um so we got really really but for quentin to say that was i, I was totally speechless so i'm not speechless that often but <laughs> i get that yeah. <laughs> and uh so that's how that's how hi mom happened because of greetings because brian had worked me so he cast me greetings and and uh, then i worked with brian in the fury in the oh yeah I've seen it's that. A, yeah. a small part in that. Uh, and then I was supposed to do, he did a movie uh, with Paul Williams. Um, Phantom was, of the Paradise. Yeah, Phantom of the Paradise. And oh, I, yeah. I was supposed to play Paul Williams' girlfriend that's aged and okay. he hasn't aged. Yep. So um, they were going to shoot, I think it was Texas. And I, but I was, uh, locked into a movie with Michael Parks called, called a movie that we called Can Ellen Be Saved? Okay. And, and even though I had like a week off, they wouldn't let me go to Texas. To uh. And I would have been in and out because I know how Brian films, you know, one day and you're, you're done. Is but, he, it's quick usually with him? Quick with him. Now, it, it, on The Fury, it wasn't as quick because it was a I think it was a Fox film, major film. So it was yeah. a lot of videos and a lot of, and, uh, 
and I had a chance to uh, to uh, imagine the work with because uh, my scene was with Amy Irving. Yep. But uh, but John Cassavetes was on the film, and we had a chance to reminisce because uh, he was he worked with Polanski on Rosemary's Baby. Right. And he ha absolutely hated hated Roman Polanski. Hated. Yeah, I know. Yeah. They fought. Yeah. I, I read that they fought all the time on set over uh, everything. Like you know, even things about life, uh, not just the movie. Like they had opposing views. From what I read, anyways, I don't know if you heard that when you were there. I, I didn't hear that, but what I did hear was they cut out uh, the main the main reason why John makes a pact with the devil is because he's always losing parts to this one guy. He's, come, right. he's always coming in second banana, and he just is lost the part again to the same guy, and so he makes this pact with the devil that he gets, he gets to be first, and because he wants his wife is pregnant, he wants to make some money. He he's, he he needs a job, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and so that kind of um, that gives you a reason why you do that. But when uh -huh. when when Polanski didn't want that reason or kept cutting out that reason, he said, well, there's no reason. I'm, I'm just some really horrible person that does this to his wife. Right. And, and, and why should, you know, and so they were sparring over what, and of course, uh, Polanski won because that was his film. It was a brilliant film. It was a wonderful yeah. film. Oh, yeah. Great. We, we but, reviewed it recently, Steve and I. Yeah, we love oh, that movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. We love it. It's it's terrific, but you know when John has his as an actor, he was trying to justify you know and his sure. his thing, and uh, Roman you know Roman had his vision and John had his vision, and I think that's uh, uh, John said well I'm making these movies including the Fury, so I can make another movie of my own. Yeah. Yes. And so uh, so he he was now he was a really great guy. If I had come to him without knowing him and handing him a picture and resume, he would have said thank you, thank you. You know, not that he yeah. would use me, but he would. He no, but he was pleasant. Yeah, pleasant. He, he's he's uh, you know gracious, and uh, you don't have to be mean to an actor. Really, no. actors are the bravest people I know, and they're they they're, they they suffer so much and they get rejected so much. So. Mm -hmm. And just say thank you very much you know we'll see we'll see and no promises but we'll see you know and maybe right. once in a while somebody will say well you've got the right look you can you can go i mean i think that's the reason i got that movie with michael parks a uh, canela mm -hmm. be saved because mm -hmm. i had at that time i was like a hippie right i walked in with my long hair my long dress and they said oh you're perfect for the part well i was perfect for the part but sometimes it's it's just that if you have that look that for being in the hippie community with Michael Parks, yeah. uh, being my leader, I it was, it was perfect for that part. So, but you know, sometimes sometimes those things happen when you are perfect for the part. And the in part. Can Ellen Be Saved, you worked with there's Leslie Nielsen and John Saxon, John Saxon Louise yeah. uh, Louise Fletcher. Yes, yes, all those oh wonderful my people. God. Wonderful incredible. People. And Michael Parks was wonderful. He was such a love, such a sweetheart. Late, later on, after that movie, I had to come in. I went back to New York and had to come in to uh, Los Angeles for a little while. And I was really so broke. I couldn't afford a hotel. And he said, just stay at my house. I'm not there. I'm oh, wow. wherever he was, somewhere else filming. And he said, so I, I got the keys to his whole house. And he just let me stay there. I mean, <laughs> lovely man. Just, just. Uh, that's rare. That's yeah, amazing. Very rare that somebody would be so generous, and he was a very mm -hmm. generous person. I right. really miss him. <laughs> miss what him. What was De, Le De Niro like back back then? You, I mean, you you knew him when he was like twenty two, and you even yeah. worked with him recently again, right? In uh, a movie. Uh, well, I I'm, I'm his dead wife in uh, War on Grandpa. War with that's Grandpa. Right. right. Yeah, and uh, he actually actually asked for me. Uh, oh, we had a lot of pictures together, and he and because I remember the '80s, AD calling. I'm not a very smart guy. Well, we just want a picture of you because Bobby asked for you. I said, oh. "Well, wait a minute. Uh, I have. I actually. Well, we just send it in. Send it in." I said. Excuse me, I'm a member of the union. I just don't yeah. send in a picture. You're doing a movie. Um, you, uh, 
well, blah, blah, blah. and then and then the producers call. <laughs> And I said, well, they said, well, he asked for you to be, because he's looking, wants to look at these pictures and one. I said, I know why he wants to pick. He said, well, we could, we could, we, we had another actress lined up, just somebody, but he didn't want her. I said, well, I understand why he doesn't want her. He's looking at somebody that he's known. Yeah. Right. His wife for 40 years, 50 years. Yeah. He's known me that long. So when you, when he, as an actor, I understood why Bobby did that. And I was, really thankful and very happy that he did that because he wants to look at pictures and have some kind of emotion not just any right. picture out of a catalog or something that won't exactly to, won't relate to and they didn't understand right. that they did not uh, understand that right yeah and so I, I i have i haven't have a lot of pictures of me and bobby so i sent them my son actually sent them for me i don't know how to send these things it's terrible i'm, I'm <laughs> techn technologically challenged i don't either no i i don't worry i understand <laughs> you're not things. alone <laughs> no and Both so slow. sorry go ahead yeah and so uh they love the pictures and so i got you know a daily contract which is fine i mean i'm not gonna sure. hold them up and say i want this on huh? that's fine but uh it's inter it's interesting that people didn't understand why he picked me right. because he knew we we, we well, have we're friends exactly yeah. oh we, we get it because we're actors yeah, like these people yeah. I got they're it just right business away. people yeah that's they don't know like not. that just whatever's easy i don't know what the <laughs> yeah. hell he wants <laughs> no, I get it. I, I I totally understand that. And then, of yeah. course, with De Niro again, I, I we'd be remiss not to mention Deer Hunter. I want to ask uh, uh, many questions about this, but oh God, do I remember? I mean, who doesn't? The whole first wedding half of the yeah. film. And something I'm curious about: when you watch the the giant wedding scene, you feel like you're at a wedding yeah. while shooting it. Was there any of that feeling, or was it just business? Oh, it was that feeling all right. It was yeah. that feeling. People actually, the, the townspeople that played some of the, uh, you know, background extras, whatever, extra artists, uh, they were they were local people that really brought gifts. They brought real gifts. And I thought, oh, wow. <laughs> Not that we kept them, but it was, wow. And the whole atmosphere, well, the place was um, a hall uh next not, not far from the church it was a mm -hmm. big hall and um that was used for these kind of events and other events but in the yeah. neighborhood. so it already had an atmosphere that you were not on a set you were in this this hall yes and, uh, and there was a, the bar and everything and uh, lots of that big space we shot that wedding scene when when they were having a heat wave in cleveland oh. it was 100 and almost 120 degrees. It was like the biggest heat wave. And that hall had no air conditioning. And littered <laughs> with all these so people. people. And you can crew. feel it. You can feel the yeah. sweat. And, but it makes sense because you're all dancing and jumping it around. Was. That wedding dress never got dry. They tried to dry it with hair dryers and stuff. It always I put bet. it on every, every day. It was damp. And... Uh, and that, but we had no control over it. You know, we couldn't no. put in air conditioning in this big hall. It was impossible. So, yeah, but it was, it was, it was amazing. And, and at one time, Michael had to fight the studio because they cut the wedding scene almost to nothing. And then oh. they, then they pre previewed it with people and it didn't work because all the characters and their relationships are. Are, are are viewed in that opening uh, wedding scene. That's right. That's how you establish the relationships of all yep. these people. Without establishing the relationships, you don't care. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I agree. And I think if that movie were made today, they would butcher it. It would be exactly <laughs> that. They would That's just fair. get to the action. They wouldn't set up the emotional connection. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and you're right. And you don't care. How long did that, that shoot go on for, for the wedding? Uh, it was the... A little over a week, I think. Uh, it was um, Michael fought hard for that. You know, Michael, the film at one time was almost stopped when the big boys came in, and we we they canceled the whole day of shooting. And uh, I saw Michael in the restaurant with the guys, and there was a heated exchange of things going on. I didn't want to get closer to eavesdrop and have them, you know, uh, get mad at me. 
but I could tell from the body behavior and the, and the way my and my body and the way. Then they they went ahead and they uh, they okayed it, but they almost didn't make that movie. It almost got stopped because it was expensive for that right. time, you know. Yeah. And uh, they were trying to cut scenes. Michael Michael really stood his ground. He's pretty brave. They were trying to cut scenes and cut, but he knew. He knew he, he had put it together. He right. knew that you couldn't cut the wedding, that right. you couldn't cut the war, you couldn't cut the funeral. It was the that was about that the, the symbols of, of life, the wedding, yes. uh, the war, yeah. the, the funeral. It's all about that. And that's why I think the movie was so powerful. And I have to say, because of Michael Chimino, that movie got made because it would not have gotten made without him. They would have butchered it. And today they would butcher yeah. it. It's so oh, quick, 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 quick. It, it, it's so quick. The cuts are so quick today that you yes. don't feel anything for the actors. Yeah. No, you don't get to know anyone. You don't and, get to yeah. know anyone. And you, you see that, especially in like horror films. Like now mm. there's no setup of the character. You don't get, so they just try to scare you right away. And I know you've been in a good number of horror movies. Um, I want to ask if you, if you don't mind. Uh, I loved Amityville too. Yeah, I uh, did too. <laughs> and I I saw that when I was real young, and it yeah. really upset me, but yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Uh, it's t I just saw it again the other day, and I was writing Robert as I was watching it. Like <laughs> Jesus Christ, this is dark. Um, yeah. But I always think that horror film actors, uh, and you see it with your character in Amityville too. Don't get the credit because you have to run ragged. Your emotions have to be so raw. And like right off the bat, you guys move, you and Burt Young uh, move into this house. And right away, right away, things go almost, almost right away south. And between you and, and the Burt Young character and the ghosts and you're upset and it's just so intense and it must be so exhausting for you to shoot that. Um, and I want to know... A, was it very uh, exhausting? And B, what's it like working with Burt Young? Well, Burt is my buddy. Burt is my friend. You know, we, we, we even hung out together on our off day shoots. And he's a, he's a softy underneath all that stuff. He's, he's a real softy. He's very sensitive. He hides it. He hides it in mm. kind. But he's a wonderful person to work with. He's such a professional and so wonderful. Um, it was uh, a great collaboration, I think. I, I really kind of credit the director, Damiano Damiani, Italian director, made some wonderful Italian films, yeah. um, for, for making it kind of an adult horror film with oh, yeah. psychological horror. Uh, I think anybody else shooting it would have just shot it, boom, boom, bang, bang, boom, yep. you know, he really was uh, interested in the psychological mechanisms behind um, behind these characters and the religion and the mm. power of the dark forces versus the light for the religious thing, and uh, and each character. I, he spent a lot of time with each person and their character. Not that we talked about it. We didn't talk about it intellectually. Mm -hmm. We uh, we just kind of in the moment he would say something that was kind of triggered something so that mm -hmm. you went in with one thing. I don't like directors that talk a lot psychologically mm -hmm. uh, or a lot of. Uh, I, I feel like a few the fewer things they say the better because I get it. I pretty much get it right away. Yeah, and, and I and I I'm able to change it. I'm not stuck in. Oh, this is the way I want to do it. Yeah. If it makes sense the way they want to do it, I'll go with it. I'll yeah. do it. But I don't want it over, over intellectualized. I don't mm -hmm. like that. personally. That's I don't like that. I, 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 I've got. I've done work on the a lot of work on the character before I go in. Now because I can change that, I'm flexible. Uh, just give me credit that I can do that. Right. But, um, it's just. Uh, it was a night. I mean, I loved all the actors that I worked with. I loved James Olsen and yep. and.
Franklin and Jack Magner. They were uh, Jack and I be, we are still friends. We we remained lifelong friends. Yeah, he didn't day. really yes, do too nice. much after. Well, he um, had a family, okay. and uh, and he decided it was a, a choice between family and film because he had a family to support, okay. and, and so they moved back to uh, near Cape Cod and Boston, and and he mm -hmm. made the choice that that was his family it was more important to him. Fair enough. Yeah, you know, because it wasn't easy afterwards to get jobs. You know, you think you did a main big big film and, and a starring role. But it doesn't break a lot of times the way you think it, it would. And, uh, right. and I think it, it, it didn't for Jack either. And he's wonderful, an amazing actor. Amazing oh, he's great. Yeah. He's an amazing human being. He, he and his wife, May, they're just wonderful people. And I just saw them recently, and it's, it's terrific. I was supposed to go out and visit them this summer. Uh, they live near Cape Cod. And, but with the with the you know the virus yeah. and everything, I didn't go. Maybe next summer we'll go, we'll go hang out for a week. But uh, and Bert, Bert is uh, you know if I saw him again, it would be an instant connection. Uh, he lives on Long Island and he's he's out there doing his artwork. But it would be an instant. It would be like we never left. You know, right. those, those are the kind of actors sometimes that you, you just know no matter where they are, you'll always be friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, are you a horror movie fan? Do you do you watch these films? No. <laughs> I, I kind of thought so. You're like I Robert. Them, I don't watch them. I'm really scared of them. I mean, I do I'm them. The same way. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, my first horror movie that I saw was The House of Wax with Vincent. Oh, yeah. Uh, why am I forgetting it? It's that? Vincent Price and Vincent Charles Price. Bronson. Vincent Price was like the house of wax. I had nightmares for a year with that movie. I thought, oh my God, he was so good, obviously. He was such a good actor. And uh, Charles Brunson movies, I like actually. I mean, you know, I have to be in the mood for them, but sure. I, I, you know, the shoot him up, the hero, the shoot him up, bang me. But the other movies that I've made, I don't really watch them because they're kind of scary. <laughs> Fair enough. So then, do you personally? Do you are you? Do you believe in ghosts? Uh, I don't believe in ghosts per se. I don't know. If, I don't know if we define ghosts. I believe in spirit. Spirit. Okay. I've had a couple of spirits come to me, but oh. not, but not in a bad way. In a okay. way that was they were at the foot of my bed, and I opened my eyes too quickly and the energy it was energy and it vanished so i have i have a feeling that we all have someone people some people call it angels that we have someone that does or maybe family deceased mm -hmm. family or, i, I believe thought, that I, I always thought it was my father that was at the foot of my bed and um so i feel that but i i'm not scared by it i feel okay. like i'm protected but who, you know what? The, I, I don't. That's my experience. Now, other pe people have had a lot of different experiences because there you have uh, the priests, you know, doing uh, the ex ex exorcism, and and it, it's happening. I mean, it's happening, and they don't report it very much. I don't think. Yeah. They want. But there's there was a woman in Italy, I think, recently last year that had to be yeah. exorcised. Yes. They filmed it and everything. So yes. I, I think there are dark forces but i always put the light around myself you know especially when i feel like i'm in a dangerous situation i just just put this light on the white light i like that and yeah. that that's that's just for, for me but mm -hmm. i i don't deny somebody's experiences i i think people experience things that i've never experienced and mm -hmm. um it's all valid you know they even if somebody poo poos it you can poo-poo it all you want, but that person, that's real to that person. 100%. Well said. No, I, I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I won't go into my, th I kind of feel the way you do about all, all of that, but I do love horror movies. Uh, yeah, well, a lot uh, of people do, thank God. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like, no kidding. I wouldn't have a career in horror movies. I always take horror movies seriously, like that person is really going through that. So yeah. I don't, I don't try to make it horror. I try to make it as real as I can so
So uh, there's a wonderful Argentinian film called The Aura, A-U-R-A, -A, with Ricardo Darin. He's a wonderful okay. actor. He's one of my favorite actors. You, you must see that. The Aura. I, I'm writing it down. It's, yep. Uh, it's, it's truly a horror film to me without it being without it being, you know, dead bodies and stuff. But it's truly exactly. yeah, 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 yeah. It's a wonderful film. It's just okay. a terrific film to see. And I'm I like curious. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll have to check that one out. You you mentioned in your book that you almost uh, were going to be in Serpico, uh, and mm -hmm. but you couldn't over a scheduling conflict as Pacino's girlfriend. So what you you said you met Lumet for about an hour and had a great conversation. What was that? Because I love Sydney Lumet. I was curious what that conversation was like. What uh, what is Gentlemen, what I mean, there are people that you meet that really kind of take you in, mm -hmm. that listen to you and talk and are affected by you. And um, I had told him at the time that he was a very, um, he had read Solzhenitsyn, and that was my father's friend in the gulags, that the prison camps, the Stalin's prison camps. And um, I had told him that this. Um, Scene in One Day in the Life of Ivan Denisovich, the eye eating scene was my father. Uh -huh. And uh, he'd used, he used, he told, told people when they left, he told my father and the people in the prisons, he said, I'm going to write about you. I will write about you. I will. He had a terrific memory and he would mm. remember everything. Uh, my father said he remembered all these poems when my father couldn't remember them because he had no paper to write them down. My father once. He wrote the poems. He he, he was he went out of his mind, but right. Solzhenitsyn remembered them. He said it was fantastic memory. It was a great memory. So anyway, I mentioned that to Sydney, and he had actually read the book and was very interested in that. And so we had a human to human uh, exchange, uh -huh. and then um, I didn't get the part there right away. I uh, I got booked in um, the uh, executive suite. With uh, not executive executive action action, yeah. action. with uh, with Bert Lancaster and uh, Robert Ryan, I, I didn't work with them. We, we I I was uh, the there were in the movie there were two assassination teams assassination team A and B. I was assassination team B, mm -hmm. people that assassinate going to assassinate John Kennedy, and there was a political very it was very controversial. They shut down secret locations because they didn't want people uh they thought it was going to be a big big movie so i went out there to film it and i started the film i think i had two days under me and my my uh, my agent calls me and said well sydney wants you for this part and i said I, lynn or whatever that was his name i said lynn i can't leave this movie i've already got two days of shooting and i've got like I was on, on the film for two weeks uh, so she was really upset with me, but mm -hmm. um, what can you do? You know, yeah. kind of, it, if I had known ahead of time that Sydney was, and I was in the finals for that part, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I wouldn't have accepted executive action. Right. So, um, but I didn't know. It was one of those things in life where. You know, it would have been better exposure for me for Serpico because executive action went nowhere. <laughs> but, uh, but you know, these are the choices and the things you make, and you know, nobody, everybody looks back, or you always look back. I should have, should have, should. Yeah. Well, right. Don't shit on yourself. That's all <laughs> I can say. It's it's like it, it's like it's a tempting thing. I do that every once in a while, and I make myself stop, just stop, stop, stop. That's just how things went, and. You know, it's just mm -hmm. that, that's the way. It's, he made a wonderful movie. Serpico was a wonderful yeah. movie. Oh yeah. You know, yeah. You know that's Even I, that's one of our one of our favorites for sure. Yeah. Uh, that's another true. another really uh, a director I really love, Jerry Schatzberg. You worked oh, with yeah, Panic in Needle Park mm -hmm. and Scarecrow. Scarecrow. Uh, how did you come to get to to meet him and get in those films? Well, again, I was made. That was when you could make rounds. And I made rounds at his office, and I had just done greetings. I think Jerry saw greetings and really loved it. 
But I just dropped a picture off and I said, I just did this movie called Greetings and this and that. He said, though, the movie's pretty much cast, mm -hmm. but there's a little part we can, we, we'll, uh, we'll figure something out. And then, oh. then, uh, then I, I played the nurse um, with Kitty. Yeah. And, and, uh, and then, then Jerry, uh, he's a wonderful person. He's just a terrific person. He actually wound up living on 86th Street, and I was on 85th Street at the time. So we'd run into each other a lot at this little coffee shop. Uh, but uh, so we became, you know, friendly. And right. so when uh, Scarecrow was casting, I was in the West Coast, and he was casting out of the West Coast. So I think I left a message for him and saying, you know, Jerry, I'm on the West Coast. If there's anything there, you know, here, see me or something. Yeah. And so um, he had the casting director, I think her name was Nessa Hyams, very nice woman. She had me in and uh, she said, well, well, we'll work this out. We'll have we'll put you in. Jerry wants you in this movie, so we'll put you in. And so we shot in Colorado, very nice, very nice area, a little town. And uh, Jerry's, I, I, I run into Jerry every once in a while still. And we just, you know, he's, he's, he's planning another movie. And oh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, well, I read he, he wrote a sequel to Scarecrow, but I guess Gene Hackman won't act anymore, right? So they can't do it. But I don't know if what else he wrote. Maybe he, I'm sure he's got lots of scripts. He's got, he's, got, he's got a new script he's been working on, I think, for over a year now. Um, oh, okay. And I don't know what, what it's about. I have no idea. I didn't ask him. But uh, hopefully he'll do one more movie or maybe two more. He'll be, he's very talented. He's so good. He's oh, very good with actors, too. He's just very gentle. Gentle yeah. kind of design, very gentle. Right. And did he have you read originally for Panic no. in the Park? Like was, no. There was no reading, just no reading. that we just gave it to you. That's amazing. Well, yeah. what's amazing is that the, those those directors are gone. The first person I went up for a major actor uh, uh, for a part was Elia Kazan. This is before I knew him, became friendly with him with his family and with Barbara. But I didn't know him. I, I had uh, done a movie called, uh, well, Hi, mom, and he had yeah. written me a nice note postcard about how much he liked that uh, the movie and everything. And then again, I, I wound up. I was in LA at the time, and uh, and I found I was last casting the last tycoon. I had never yeah. met him. I had never met him up to this point. So um, he he had me in, and it was a long. It was a Paramount Studios. It was a long room, long, very long room. And he had nobody there, just him. No producers, no casting directors, just him. The moment I walked in, I could feel his energy just taking me in. It's a long walk, maybe 100 feet. So I think it was, he did that on purpose. Right. So by the time I sat down, he said, well, you've got the part. Wow. And, thought, wow. And, that's <laughs> and then he said, I just want to make sure you can type. There's a type right. there over there. I said, well, okay, I can type. And then I, I type, type, type. It was an old, one of these old, you know, 1920s typewriters. Yeah. And, uh, and I typed and he said, oh, that, uh, he, that's good. He said, she didn't even type. That's fine. And so I didn't, I said, I had a lot of misspellings here. I didn't get the spelling right. He said, oh, don't worry about that. He said, oh, we won't, we won't see that what you write. Just, but your fingers are absolutely doing the right thing. Right. So that's how I got that part without, without an audition. Now, unfortunately, that movie was, they took the editing away from, you know, right. Yeah, and right. it, uh, I, that was it for him. He he was not in control of his movies anymore. He didn't yeah. want. That was the last movie. That was, that was yeah, the last yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. And so he just he just went to his writing. He controlled his writing and his stories. But in those days, let's see, Elia didn't have me read. Jerry didn't have me read. Uh, Brian just uh, simple uh, uh, audition. I mean improv. Uh, Brian didn't have me read for the second one. First yeah. one. Um, Michael didn't have me read. Really? We no, didn't have me. Read. We sat down and talked for about forty-five minutes. The, that this that was an era. That era no longer exists. It's it, yeah. Now it, they it, like four callbacks for one line. You know, <laughs> you know. Now even you don't. I haven't met a director. 
on a reading yet they send in the video they send in yeah. the, uh yeah. you, you know now you self-tape yeah, I, yeah. You know, something really got lost here really really got yeah. lost when you don't have a human interaction with someone when you don't have mm -hmm. human interaction with the director Mm -hmm. When you go on the set and you sometimes you don't even meet the director because he's talking to you from through a system, you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's it's the days of meeting the directors and then they'll they'll have you work work at scene, say, Well, you that was good, but can you do it this way? You can or saying, Well, you know, you're not quite right for this, but I loved your audition. But the days of having people not even read and having that kind of confidence uh -huh. in your own talent and authority that i i don't find that anymore i don't find directors i find directors even kind of scared actors sometimes so uh, why do you yeah. think that changed why, what, what, do you, what do you think happened along the way the, the digital stuff it made it very easy but it, it took the humanity out of it. it, took mm -hmm. the right. out of it. So the great movies that Kazan made and other people made are, uh, I think the Europeans still have that. They have yeah. a direct relationship with their films and those wonderful films they make um, that they're, they're, the, the director is very collaborative with the actors. But today it's very hard. For, I feel sorry for actors today. I think it's so hard. Because you're you you're just a digital person. You don't get to ask questions. You don't get to talk. I don't yeah. mean that you have to talk for like with Michael and I talk for 45, 50 minutes. I don't mean that. But I, you can see it a person for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Can you see someone for five minutes and talk to them and say, you know, this or that? Or uh, but I think most of the time I wind up on the set with directors I've never met. Yeah, and you want to shoot things fast, especially on television. You don't even get a chance oh, yeah. to talk to them. You don't get a chance right. to talk to your director. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's something is really really lost, and it's it's very sad for me because I think that I, the performance, the movie show, especially American movies now, it's they're very fast and this and um, yeah. I mean I saw because I was on the foreign film committee uh, for years, so. Uh, they changed the name of it to something else this year. But uh, there were wonderful, wonderful. There was those who remained behind the Hungarian movie last year. Mm -hmm. I thought was the best movie because the Parasite got it. But I thought those who remained behind, right. the acting, the, you know, I, I, I judge a movie now by do I remember it? Do I remember it six months later? Do I remember it? I still remember those who lived behind. It was so powerful. The actors were so wonderful. Um, you know, uh, uh, I remember still Victor, Victor uh, Sika's film, A Brief Vacation, which was this wonderful uh, actress called Florinda Bocan. I remember her performance. I remember that film. This was like 30 years ago. I still remember it. I'm still thinking about it. I still get touched by that film. I. I remember, oh, the Rossellini did uh, mm. uh, Roma, 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 the open city. Yeah, called. Roma open city, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, he shot that film. It was interesting because uh, Brian De Palma shot greetings on, on uh, end, the, what do you call it, the ends of films when they have the, yes. uh, you know, oh. the, uh, the, the, like two minutes left over, five minutes lo left over that yes. they don't use. Uh, well, well uh, Rosalini shot Rome Open City that way. He didn't have he didn't have enough film. It was right after the war, and he had this guy named uh, Rod Geiger, Geiger I think it was, who worked on a, he worked on a Signal the Signal Corps movies. Mm -hmm. That sent him the end, the film end, yes. and that's how. That's why sometimes you think the film doesn't quite match, comes across as a documentary, is because he, those he he shot that film on those loose ends, the ends yes. that weren't used by the signal for five minutes, four minutes, seven minute film, and and yet those films have so much heart. Yes. Yeah. You know they're they're just these old films. I I. You know, it's a wonderful life. Jimmy Stewart, 
I mean, how oh, often I'm does this play? He plays every year. <laughs> it's so full of heart. And, and even yeah. I've seen that movie 20 times, I still, you know, still. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I'm, still, I'm still passionate about, uh, I mean, my favorite film, the film that really changed my life in when I was 12 was East of Eden. Sure. East of Eden, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, James I, Dean. I, I, well, I had no idea it was, but. I walked out of that film. I remember walking down that, the street and saying, this is what I want to do. This is the kind of, this is how deep I want to go and thinking this is it. And that's when I first heard of Kazan, who, who made this, who did this film. And then of course he made a movie with Montgomery Cliff and one of my favorite actresses, Joe Van Fleet. Wild oh, right. River. Wild is that River. Wild River? Wild and River, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. she she played Jim, James Dean's mother in East of Eden. Yeah, but she is she and Montgomery Cliff are extraordinary in Walt. Yeah, that's a great film. Those are performances that yeah. you know, years later I still remember. Uh, yeah. Splendor in the Grass with my my teacher oh, sure. Barbara yeah. Logan. She played Warren Beatty's crazy sister. Right. Yeah. Right. I I saw that and I said, "Who is this actress? Who are these?" People, I mean, that movie also stuck. You know, there's movies that you go that if they were made today, they'd be quick, quick, quick. But yeah, these right. was allowed that you to get to know and care for these people. Right. Oh, absolutely. And so um, I think we're missing that today. We're missing. Oh, and we're missing, God, yeah. we're missing now. Uh, oh, Cinema Paradiso. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 The, yeah. Film, the postman, well, Italian films there. I mean, it's like I still remember them. But I think what we're missing today is um, that kind of humanity in our films. I, I mean, yeah. I don't mind seeing one of the, uh, you know, those action Marvel. Marvel uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Right. I, I don't mind seeing those. I don't mind seeing a good shoot em up bang bang either. Yeah. But those are entertaining in a different way. But I yeah. don't want that to be the only thing on the menu. That's, and, that's, that's the, yeah, there's no, no alternatives. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it's so oh, much of that. It's so much of that now, that you know, I, I enjoy them when I'm seeing them. Mm. I admire, admire their spe special effects. But do they stay with me a week later? No. No, I agree with you. No, I, I think that's actually a really good way of differentiating it. it yeah, that stuff's very exciting in the moment. Yeah. But you're right. I, I, it doesn't give you anything to think about. But I don't really feel. Yeah, you know, um, too much, and it's certainly as you say. Like I'm not, yeah, I'm not thinking about it after. I'm not going to remember every moment. I'll remember like a flash. Yeah, yeah. Like and that, and then that's it. And yeah. I I totally agree. And I always wonder. I I've told Robert the story. Uh, I I was acting in a thing once with a young director, and he was just out of film school. And he said to me, "How am I doing?" And I said, "Well, you're the director. How am I doing?" <laughs> and he goes. Well, no, it's just I, I've never worked with actors before. And I'm like, but you were given this project. Like, I don't understand. Well, his school, everything was just about the picture, and it was very technical, and it was very digital. And so I think the big difference is a lot of those directors that we're talking about came from theater, came from taking their time with their actors. Mm -hmm. And I just don't think that directors are getting that. Like that's So they have no idea how to talk to an actor. And so well, you're no, right. They you're, just, you're, you're, but you're right because what's happening in film schools is they learn all the techniques. They're great at the techniques, but they don't have classes on how to work with actors. Now, right. Paul Mann, my 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 last teacher, um, he took in big time directors at that time to work with him. He made them be actors. Right. He made them do scenes with actors. They say there's some big, big directors that came, came to, to work with him because he taught them about acting and he taught them how to talk to actors about acting. That's not happening in film school today. They're, no. they're, 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 they're alienated from the actors and they're great. They're brilliant at technique. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I that's, think that is it. I think that's yeah. it. And, you know, <laughs> supply meets demand. And that's yeah. just, it, it, I don't know where the change, if there's a change. I mean, in some ways, uh, uh, I think the more dramatic, what could have been films are now going to Netflix and becoming mm -hmm. miniseries. And okay, 
but unfortunately like a movie theater experience now is only reserved for the yeah the flashy stuff and again yeah like you said like nothing against that it's fun i enjoy it but i don't remember it right and and the thing is about movies for me anyway when i was uh came to america my my mother and stepfather were working nights and i was a latchkey kid and uh, I didn't have much interaction with my with the, the parental side because they were so busy working, just working to survive. That the movies were my is where I got educated. Really, mm -hmm. the movies are what taught me at that time about things and people and morals and places. <clears throat> and if it wasn't for the movies at that time, because I had no uh, adult to to help me. I, I I think that 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 was those were my parents. So the movies, fortunately, right. at that time, mm. Whedon, you know, Wild River, all those movies helped me become a better human being because there were a lot of those around. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, right, and and even John Wayne. By the way, guess who Lee, Lee Strasberg's favorite actor was? Was it John um, Wayne? Was it? Oh, I didn't know that. Really? That was actor. He thought that was the best actor out there. And he was really happy when he, he liked people that never worked with him. Okay. Yeah, he liked people that never worked with him. But John Wayne was his favorite actor. Well, I saw John Wayne in Hondo yep. when I was a teenager. I thought he's he, Geraldine Page. I thought he, they were wonderful. They were absolutely wonderful. Hondo was a great film. Yes. And then other films he did, of course, like, uh, you know, he did the uh, True Grid and he did other films that he was wonderful. But that oh, was yeah. his most favorite actor. <laughs> That's really neat. Now I had no idea about that. Yeah, I, thought, that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, me too. I thought, and I thought, well, I have to give credit to him because he is believable in things he does and his movies, yeah. like all oh, yeah. so touching film. But, um, but so I, I don't know, somewhere along the way, I think you're right. The directors that came from um, Kazan certainly came from the group theater where he had to act yeah. in his early, yes. he in early movies. He was always good. Okay. He wanted to go on to be a director, but because of his teaching, he, he, he learned from, he was not afraid of actors. And he yeah. would say very little things to him, like like my, a lot of stuff in uh, Last Tycoon. Hold on just a minute. I lost yeah. I lost my ear. Hold on. Um, in Last Tycoon, uh, I, I was a secretary for Robert De Niro. Uh, yeah. He had three secretaries. But what was cut out was a lot of things were cut out in that thing. So you didn't really understand my character. But all Kazan said to me was, you're secretly in love with Monroe Star, you know, the character, yeah. Robert De Niro's character. You're secretly in love with him. So every time he come in, I would flutter a little bit, and my key, my keys would my hands would flutter on the thing. That's all he had to say to me. Yes. Yeah. I read that. I read that. Uh, ben Gazzara said that in his memoir too, when he worked with him on Cat and a Hot Tin Roof, that he would say yeah. so little to actors. He would just so say very little. Yeah. And Barbara was that yeah. way too. She didn't say much, but what she said was deeply impacting. Well, it really. Yeah. That's why I don't like people that over talk. Yeah. Right. I mean, right. for directors, Me too. I, 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 you have to find that, like what Gazan said to me, you're secretly in love with him. And I knew that, I knew then as a little secretary, dowdy little thing, that he would never pay any attention to me in the night, but I would still be secretly in love with him. And, uh, and that, that, that's a, that's a director that, that, that loves actors. Uh, and, uh, Michael Cimino loved actors. Yeah. When, when we had to learn that dance, we had to learn three dances. Uh, and so, except for Chris Walken, who was a professional dancer, he That's got right. it. We, um, we had like a day off to learn <laughs> these dances with a professional Russian dance. She had a dance, uh, dance uh, group that they went around professionally doing these Russian dances. Well, we came in. And uh, I think Meryl, Meryl was a dancer too. So they had it easier, but the rest of us were like, uh, so we had learned three of those Russian dances. And so 
at the end she said well you'll never get this it takes it takes my people at least six months to get these dances you'll never get this and we like george junza and i and um, wow. a couple other people we were in the halls of that hotel all night long learning those dances on our, you know going through and learning those dances so by the time we got to the first scene the next day we got to the scene and uh and dancing the dances um uh, and we did them. We did them fine. Maybe not like professionals, but we were fine. We got all the steps. Yeah. In. And I said to Michael, "What made you think? What made you? What made you? What made you know that we would learn these complicated dances just in a day?" And he said, "I have faith in you. I have faith in you." <laughs> and simple. and it was that simple. He trusted us. He trusted yeah. us. He trusted, us, trusted us. But that's rare today. That's rare. Yeah. I mean, it's like, yeah. It's a rare thing, and I, I'm, I, it's, you know, I don't. I mean, I want to dwell on the past some because it's, it's the memories are good, but I don't. There's nothing I can do now in this in this um, era of that technology is more important than your human actor. That yeah. uh, I can't change it, and I feel really sad for the new actors, the brave new actors that are coming into this. For you, for both of you, Stephen. And Robert, that 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 it won't it'll be different. It's always different, but that yeah. that this lack of humanity doesn't quite, you know, reach out. I mean, even yeah. I remember even auditions I went to that I didn't get. I felt good about it. I felt good. Well, I did. I did the best, and I had this interaction with this director, and I feel validated as an artist. I felt validated as a human being. Mm -hmm. I think today. That's what, you know, I know the reality is, and it took me a long time to accept it, but now I do videotape. I'm yeah, like, right. I'm I videotape. Well, we do do videotapes. You, you can't get out of it. But what's yeah. sad is that you don't have a human being that, that says to you, well, let's do it differently. Or a human being says to you, you know, I really liked what you did and validate right. your work. That, yeah. That's that's not existent. So we have yeah. to, what, what do we have to do? I don't have an answer. We have to validate each other. Yeah, we right. Have, we have to take our our classes and 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 get validated there and uh, and and do our work. And and if we do good work in a class, I mean, I still remember a couple of classes that I did really good work in. And I remember I was in Los Angeles when. The woman in the, that had been in the class came up and she says, oh, I still remember your three sisters. I still remember it. It was so good. And you know what? I feel good about that scene, too. Even though it's like 20 years later, you, it's like you have to validate yourself through yourself and through your colleagues, through people right. in your classes, through people, your friends that we do that you uh -huh. work with, that that that's very important for you to val get that validation from another artist, another person. Right. I think it's really important. Yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. How, how much, you know, speaking of acting classes, I mean, in the 60s, you worked with, as we said at the beginning, like, you know, all the great acting teachers. Now we see even getting into a program, a, a good acting program is so expensive that people can't do it or they go into deep, deep debt in order to do it. How I mean, if you were, how much was it in the '60s to work with Meisner, to work with Strasberg, and all these teachers? It was very affordable. I mean, I remember Barbara charged fifteen dollars a class. Yeah, 15, amazing. One five. I think you know the thing is, I want to. Bobby studied with somebody. Bobby De Niro studied with somebody that you don't know that person. He's not famous. You don't know who he is. Um, James Dean studied with somebody else who I don't, somebody told me once a long time ago who the teacher was. I never heard of him. There are people out there, I think that, I don't think you should get into debt to study. I think right. look, look, I for, look for another person that, that first of all, where you feel safe mm -hmm. and, and somebody that does challenge you, but a little bit at a time. So that you feel yeah. that you grow a little bit of time and somebody validates your work and right. says, you know, you're doing good. Let's keep on going. 
But right. I don't think I don't think it's necessary to get into debt on, on these big so-called main teachers. I don't think it makes any right. difference. First of all, I think there's not enough time. A lot of them just do these intensives for a week. And, yeah, and they're very short. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and actors want things a lot faster now, I find, too. They think they're going to be great actors after a weekend. and they, They're not... They don't want to put the work in anymore. It's not. You know? It's not going to happen. It's a waste of money because mm, what yeah. you need is what you need is somebody where you can go to weekly, weekly. Yes, weekly, I agree. Weekly, not this intensive stuff because it doesn't. It you don't. It, there's no transformation in mm. in it. You you can yeah. maybe get some ideas. Sure. Yeah. We always yeah. get ideas, but I would I would recommend. Going to somebody like Jimmy Dean went to somebody, Bobby De Niro went to somebody that were not known teachers. They were right. famous. Now, those are the people. If you can find one person, a, 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 a acting teacher like like yourself, Robert, that that you can be in a safe space, but somebody that challenges you. But it takes at least a year, a year yes. of constant. That's what I tell my students. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You're telling the right thing. And there's no quick, if I could do it quickly like that, I'd be a, a genius. But I, you know, nobody can do it quickly, because you have to process it. Yeah, exactly. And, and it's not processing yeah. here. It's exactly. Processing, it's the whole thing. And it's a growth that you have to give yourself that year, and more if you need it and 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 keep on keep on doing it. But it's like, I would be better off studying with you, Robert, than studying, taking a week intensive thing with a famous teacher. Mm -hmm. no, you yeah. Waste your money. You're wasting yeah, I your money. Totally agree. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I totally agree. I, and I, and I, uh, when I see people who I've been, who have been with me for a while and I, you know, they come, I recently did something where I tested them and gave them like six pages and two, and they had like one night, just like you would in auditions. And yesterday, I thought they'd all be falling off the lines. I was shocked how prepared they were, right? But these people have been with me for years. So mm. it's uh, there. you could still make these things happen <laughs> if, uh, uh, under the right circumstances. But it's it's hard, so hard to find, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. Repetition, yeah. repetition, repetition, repetition. And then the growth happens through that repetition with somebody that could be like with Jimmy Dean and Bobby De Niro, they never studied with the big teachers. I mean, I know that Lee, the Strasbourg people claim them, but they didn't study with them. That's they true. Yeah. Class with them. Jimmy Dean came in once to Lee Strasberg's class, and Lee started criticizing about something. He just yep. walked out. He walked I've out heard that. Yeah, I've heard that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of other actors that uh, did that, and you know, but once you were in. The actor studio just once they claimed you, they, they claimed you, yeah. you and, and they had nothing to do with you, talent like Marlon Brando, for example. Yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah, they're Stella students Stella. Never, never studied with Lee, never was part of the actor studio, but because he was there once or something, then they yeah. Claimed him. So you have to be really careful when somebody says, Well, Jimmy Dean was my student, right? One right. Day. For one day, and he walked out. That's the part. Yeah. <laughs> Great point. Yeah. No, really. I yes, that's exactly it. And it is. I think that people are just like the way people want to watch movies. Everyone's in such a rush. And I think when they look at something like learning an art, like acting, they think that it's like a mathematical equation. Like, okay, yeah. if I can learn two plus two is four, I got it. It's not that at all. And and you, you said it perfectly, Ratanya. Like yeah. it take it's not getting an like it that's memorizing lines. Like, okay, there's like a, a math you could say to that, but that's a teeny part of it. The rest of it is in your body, and you can't just get that. Yeah. Right. No, like, no. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. That's like giving yeah. someone a paintbrush for the first day and going, okay, we're going to intensely study painting. And by Monday, you'll be able to do the Mona Lisa. No, <laughs> you won't. Yeah, it's the yeah. same thing. It's exactly. impossible. That's, that's what's misunderstood so much. It is misunderstood. It is mis my son's been studying now for eight years. He Once a week until the COVID started, he was there oh, once a week. Once a week, working, working, doing scenes. Once a week, he's grown so much in his work oh, because he made that commitment to a teacher yeah. that's not 
he's not famous, but he's good. And and yeah. he, he has a, a class and he has a he we he he he, he at personal attention, small class, I think there's twenty people. And so you get a chance to work. If you're in a big class and you don't get a chance to work, yeah. walk away. Walk away right. because you're wasting your time. Yep. You're, 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 you, people are in there for the money. And I say, you know, don't, don't spend it in, in a wise way. It's, 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 it's expensive because you have to work and you have to pay for your class and stuff. Go study with Robert. Go study with, uh, if Stephen's teaching, go study with people that are in the industry that have some knowledge and ha have been actors themselves. Because if you spend a year, at least a year minimum there, then you you will you will be transformed in ways that you don't even know. Yeah, yeah, I completely I completely agree with that. That's very 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 good advice. Um, touching back, another really uh, lovely role uh, you had was in Rocky II, uh, and you mentioned in your book that Stallone. When you met Stallone, he had said, "Where were you for Rocky?" And yeah. you, you <laughs> but you, you said you tried to get the audition, uh, but it didn't work. Uh, you couldn't quite get it. Uh, but what was he like to work with? What was Stallone like? He's very quick. He's very. He works very fast. Uh, yeah. Very nice. I ran into him uh, at last year at a, a dinner they we had for the Academy. Uh, he was up for best uh, supporting actor. Right. And so he was lovely to me. He said, oh, you know, hello, you know, this and that. So he was very friendly. He was very nice. He was very fat. He worked very, very quick, very quick. Mm -hmm. so, huh. Yeah. And you, you were there just a couple of days, I, I believe? Two days. That's, two days, that's two right. Days. Yeah. Right. right. Two days. So, uh, that, you know, that he was directing. This is the first time that I had worked with a director who was directing and starring in a movie. Right, right. And that was right. him. Like, he would step back and say, Go check and step back and say, uh, from from where we're standing. Okay, okay, yeah, let's roll. And then it was it was it was strange. It was a strange experience having. Yeah. That. Well, now that I've had the experience, if somebody does that again, it won't be so strange. Like, yeah, yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't happen so often, and especially yeah. nowadays. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no. 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 Uh, you you also uh, there was a something I found interesting in your book where uh, when you when you worked with Frank Perry on Mommy Dearest and he was showing everyone Mildred Pierce and he had said something's been lost in yeah. American film. What do, what do you think he meant by that? Well, pretty much what I said is like uh, there there's not the time given. Also, I think the stories are are. Uh, not the same. I mean, he made he made some great movies. Oh, by the way, he's the, he's another one I didn't have to read for. Just oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, you said uh, in your yeah, book yeah, you met him yeah, and yeah, he cast yeah, him. Yeah. Yeah. He's I, I think what he meant. I thought about that for a long time. That that comment stayed with me, and I think it's because we just are so quick today. We're so quick. There's such pressure on people to finish and quick and get in and get out. The money, maybe the money issues. I'm yeah. not sure, but you don't make those kind of films. Uh, you don't. You don't make films like Mildred Pierce anymore. It's uh, right. Yeah, and I think I think he was sad about it that we, that somehow that we we should be able to make these kind of classics, these kind of story stories, because people right. still like them. Look, they they like Mildred Pierce. They said, "What uh, whatever happened to ba uh, Baby Jane?" Yeah, and Betty Davis and Joan Crawford. I mean, that's still running. People still enjoy these films. Which yeah. is, I don't think you'd be able to make films like that anymore. I I, I agree. It's sad, but I I do agree with you. It, it's it yeah, and I I, yeah, I don't know. It, it I is know. sad. It's the same thing as I think we've lost something in terms of actors auditioning. We we really lost that ability to yeah. have a human exchange. Mm. Uh, I don't like the Vimeo acting mm. where you're act you're separate and somebody else's is a city and other I don't I I, I tried uh, tried watching it and it, it's it's fine. I mean I don't I'm not saying anybody was bad, but mm. I could feel the lack of actors have to react sometimes off of each other. If somebody right, yeah. but all of a sudden in the scene, if somebody's crying, you, 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 you're, you're reacting to that person. Or if somebody's maybe um, 
uh, laughing unexpectedly, you have you you kind of seeing what the other person is doing. That's why I love Mark Rylance. Oh my God, to see him! Oh, he's great. oh my God, he's, yeah. he's, he's so he's so fun. He's like um, he's he's in the moment, and I I hear that he does like fun exercises before they start. They throw balls at each other, and they mm. they uh they, they it's playtime. And I remember seeing uh, him, especially in two. I've seen everything he's done on Broadway, but I, I've gone twice a lot of times, paid a lot of money to see it sit in the second row. And I remember when I went to see Jerusalem the second time, all I did was focus on Mark Rylance because he was so incredible. And you know what? He he felt the energy because I was so focused just on him. He, he turned around and he looked right at me to see who is this person focusing on him. He was so in the moment. Mm. And then when I went to see him in uh, uh, Twelfth Night, I was again in like the second row, I think, on the edge. Uh, I, I, I was looking at him with stage because they were getting dressed on stage. I was looking at him, I'm smiling. And again, he looked right at me and waved. <laughs> now, the third time was he's doing uh, um, The King, the, the play, Farrelly, Farrelly, The King. Um, I was, I had a, a, a aisle seat and at one point he comes down as the king and he went straight to me and did an improv with me. Oh God. He is so in touch with who were, cause I was so, I was so enjoying him. I was like, my energy must have just reached out. So when he came, right. Down, he came right to me and we did this improv. He said, did you like the song? You know, I said, I loved it. I love the song. And he said a few more words. And I thought, okay, I have acted with Mark Lawrence, even though it was like for a minute. Yes. It was like, but, he, but what, what it is about him, he's so in touch with in the moment that, uh, that how do you get that when you're just doing Vimeo's? You don't get that. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. It's, it's like, it's, you know, it's another way of keeping you apart from the actor. I know it's hard now because we're the virus, but you got to have a live person. You have to have, yeah. you know, have to have a live person because an actor, that's the only thing I liked about Sandy, where he said actor has to react to the moment. Yeah. Uh, right. you, you do, you have to say, you know, I, I, I remember I was, I was doing a scene with my friend who has since passed away early, actually. Oh, that's interesting because Norman Ornelas, he was in Serpico. Uh, oh. Norman had a dream, 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 dream for many months that he was, there was a coffin floating back to Hawaii. That's where he was from, originally Hawaii. So Norman and I did these scenes together. We were professional scene partners, by the way. We, if, at that time, you, you could go audition for something in a scene. So we had two scenes, classical right. and and uh, I remember when we first did, uh, I did, uh, 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 we did uh, the Stella and Stanley scene. Um, three car, name yeah, Desire? Three car and Desire. And, um, and then at one point I, when he's, I, I played Blanche. So in, uh, in when I'm going through my pearl, when he's going through my pearls and he's, yeah. he's doing my jewelry, all of a sudden I started crying. It's like, Something happened, like he's taking everything I have in the world that I I, I own. And, and all of a sudden, Norman played it exactly the same way as we'd rehearsed it. And the teacher said, wait, stop. What's happening to her? Yeah. She's quiet. Did she cry in rehearsals? No, she didn't cry, didn't cry in rehearsals. You have to adjust to what that actor What's is doing. What's happening, yeah. And yeah. if it's really real, that every right. night, every, if you're doing the theater, every night it would be slightly different. If you yeah, do a exactly. film, you don't quite know what that person is going to do. So you have to be present for that person. Yeah. Right. And uh, that was a great lesson for both of us, for both Norman and myself. Now, the thing about the Hawaii one answer that says, this is interesting, Stephen, because uh, a couple of months, maybe six months after you finished Sherpaco, mm -hmm. he, uh, he died and the coffin was brought back to Hawaii. Oh, because he's asked me, what does that dream mean? What does that dream mean? I said, I'm no dream. I'm just probably something. I don't know. But he dreamed his own death. Yeah. So, so, you know, there are forces in your mind 
I I believe we just talked about that a bit yesterday, Robert yeah. and I, with the movie yeah. Don't Look Now. See Donald Sutherland's character, who I know you worked with also. You worked with Sutherland in Apprentice to Murder, but in Don't Look Now, he sees his own funeral. Yeah. Right. Who knows? And that, that's you right. Know, you know, you know, it, it there it's a magical, mysterious world. It really is. Mm. I mean, it really is magical. You just have to enjoy every day that's you know because things change so quickly so but yeah. they're, 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 i thought i'd tell you about norman ornell as wonderful mental man my, my professional scene partner and a great actor and he was in circle al really liked him they became very good friends so i know he would have worked a lot in al's films had he lived uh, what was what was al because uh, in in you you had that scene with pacino and hackman and scarecrow what was uh pacino like well, he's he's wonderful. He's a wonderful actor to work with because he's he 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 honors other actors. I also did that what scene in, in with him and uh, you don't know Jack uh, about the oh Jack right yeah with uh, uh, yeah. uh Barry who directed uh, yeah Barry Levinson it is, yeah. Levinson Levinson that's it yeah right. he, he's the director that directed me that behind behind in the little room behind I never met him. I never, really? never met him until a year or two later at the uh, Academy, one of the Academy events. I said, oh, I'm the person that worked with you and, you know, in the thing. And it's nice finally meeting you, I said. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm surprised because he's from that generation. I'd imagine he'd be from that generation where he'd really want to talk to all maybe, the actors. Maybe he was just busy and who knows, you know. But, uh, but Al, I... We had wonderful improv. Oh, that's so, so funny on the sets because I've known Al for years. My my late husband worked with him as a brother in Panic and Yeah, Park. Godfather. And, and, God, yeah. and the Godfathers, all the Godfathers. Yeah. So, um, so when I first get, came on that set, they said to me, you must not talk to Mr. Pacino. I said, oh, okay. And uh, just don't don't talk to him. Don't, don't try to go up to him or anything. I said, okay. And then when we were on the set, the same guy that told me, the assistant director, and told me all these things, all these do not things, do not do this, do not. Right. Then Al comes in and says, hi, we're <laughs> And then, then this guy does a double take, you know. There goes that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we did this little improv with the things. I had set up all my, uh, th it's funny because sometimes an actor has to kind of fight for his thing. They, they just gave me a whole thing. They said, we're, we're hearing your work over there. And I said, well, wait a minute. I have to look at what I'm selling. What am I selling? I'm, I'm, I'm one of yeah. these junk dealers of this thing, selling a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And so I went and rearranged. My, the guy said, you can't read. I said, no, I'm working. This is my booth. I yeah. well, I have to know what I have to sell. And, uh, okay, right, right, right. You know, they give you this attitude. And then I say, oh, okay, I'm going to put this over here. This is. Jack Kevorkian, Kevorkian, the yeah. guy that you know does the killings, of yeah, yeah, yeah. Murphy killing. So I said, what, what would he be interested? He'd be more interested in little tools and steel and gadgets and stuff. So I put these all over here, put the other things over there. And sure enough, Al is so sharp. He goes right over where I put the stuff. And he said, well, this, this looks good. Or this is, I said, oh, yeah, this is solid, solid steel. This is really good. And he this good. I can think I can use this. I can use that. How much? And, so I mean, Al went right along with it. He he went. He was really in the in the thing. He was wonderful. We did a little improv off the script, you know, and uh, so he was a lot of fun. He's a lot of he's a lot of he's a fun person to work with. He, oh, he, I he, bet. He's, he's 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 nice. When you look back um, on your career, you know, we look at these films that are so uh iconic uh rocky yeah. two deer hunter mommy dearest the uh, the fury the De palma films uh the jerry schatzberg movies and so and so on and so forth do you do you look at the do you almost pinch yourself in the sense that you were in so many of these groundbreaking films or is it well at the time it was work and and you look at it as well it was my job or how do you when you look back how does it how do you look at it I'm kind of amazed. <laughs> I'm, frankly, I'm amazed that <coughs> at, at the time I it was work. It was just work. I was just trying yeah, to I, work. I mean, I was going to acting classes, trying to trying to work, to yeah. work make trying to make eke out a living, yeah. and uh, so to me it was a chance to work uh, uh, and, and create something. 
Uh, so mm -hmm. I, I, I didn't look at it as, oh, this is good. When we did Deer Hunter, we had no idea it was going to be the great movie that it was. We had no idea mm -hmm. what Academy Award was. But, yeah. but we did our best. We just had, you know, this these wonderful actors to collaborate with and and uh, a wonderful director and and just an opportunity to work. So that's that's sort of how I looked at, at the things that I did. Right. Right. That makes yeah. Sense. yeah. Absolutely. Did you have anything else uh, to ask, Steve? No, honestly, I, I was just looking at a long list, but we've it's come up in some form yeah. or another. Uh, no, I, I, no. You want to check your list again? No, <laughs> no I did. I, I'm I, looking I was going to ask about, uh, I, did, I hadn't seen that. I wanted to watch that movie before we spoke that you did with Sean Penn. I didn't get anything. What was, what was he like? With who I'm sorry, in a Sean, uh, Sean Penn. Sean, I love Sean. Oh, I love him so much. He's uh, he was wonderful to work with. Jody Carlin, who played my husband, Elizabeth McGovern. I'd yeah. ride up to the set with her every every day. She's just lovely. Uh, it he was just great. I mean, he he was. I called him Hooper. He wanted to be called by the character name. I understand. Yes. That. I respect it that. Uh, right. And. Um, what happened on that film was the best scene for me and the most moving scene in the film was cut by Richard Benjamin. And that was the birthday party scene where my son is turning, Sean is turning 18 and he's going to go in the army with uh, Nicolas Cage. And uh, so we have this last kind of the birthday after the birthday parties when they, they're going to go on the, the next day or the day after they're going to take the train and, and, and leave uh, to go in the army. And the birthday party scene was me and I start out with me cooking in the kitchen. I've made a cake. And uh, as I'm stirring the, the meal, I realize that this is the last night I'll probably see my son. This may be the last birthday I'll see him mm -hmm. ever. People dying. My husband, John Carlin, plays a grave digger that that uh, you know, digs graves for the soldiers coming back. This is all eliminated by Mr. Benjamin. So you don't. This is where you you take the heart out and try to make it popular movie. Yes. And oh, so uh, and so um, so I'm in the kitchen uh, and I, I start. This is it's, this is something you don't even. I didn't anticipate crying. I just thought. This may be the last meal I'll ever cook for my son. This may be, and I really start breaking down. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then John Carlin comes in, and we sort of he doesn't hold me. He's he himself is sort of in that state. So it's two people like in that state. And then I I I say to him, well, let's "Help me with the candles." And we both light the candles and we're both like shaking. And then I bring the birthday cake in where, where Nicholas Cage and Elizabeth McGovern and Sean are. We're having our last dinner together and this is the, maybe the last cake. And it's wonderful because as I break the cake in, every the three other actors, myself and Johnny, we don't say anything. Mm -hmm. It's very mm. powerful very powerful right uh, it's one of the few times the crew when I'm in the kitchen after we finished the kitchen scene that the crew applauded the crew applauded they were so moved this that's rarely happened I think maybe they got wow that's and, too bad. Know, and then then that was the, that was a great scene now yeah he cut it <laughs> he yeah. cut it because they were trying to make it for the kids the kids right. okay? The kids, uh, yeah, and, and, and he cut a That's one. The of, for you. I was he, just gonna say, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he cut, cut one of Jolly Carlin's scenes with him jigging the grave for the soldier that had just come back. I mean, these were important moments in that. Yes, script, sounds like it. That wonderful script that was uh, cut to pieces, and so. But Sean personally, Elizabeth personally, I just adore them. I I ran into Sean. A couple of years ago, an academy function, private function, and they wouldn't let me in. To his, he was 
it was private function, but it was more private over there with Sean and, and the main cast. And um, so I said, well, I'm, I'm, I know Sean. The guy didn't believe me. So I, I was in the outer room, and uh, Sean comes in, Ritanya, you know? And, and then, then he said, come in, come in with me, come in. And I, I, I couldn't help it. I gave the guy a look. Yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. I yeah, good. He didn't Should have been, I was in the deer hunter, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, yeah, back off, buddy. We talked for a bit, but it was his press conference, so I didn't want to keep him too long. But uh, gosh, he's a, he was just wonderful to work with. I, I just love him. That's good, good to, to hear. hear. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Um, well, this has been this has been such a, a, a really fantastic yeah. talk. I really it's been an amazing. Yeah, I mean, we we really appreciate your time and these. Uh, Fantastic stories, and I'm I'm very nearly done. Your uh, mommy dearest, uh, yeah. the mommy dearest diary, which for those of you who don't know, is the journal that Rutanya Alda kept when she was filming uh, Mommy Dearest, uh, and it's all here. Plus, a uh, some of the stories we've uh, uh, really got the full mm -hmm. scope of you. You touch on in the the book and all the people you worked with. Uh, early in your career and about your uh, your life and it's it's a really it's a really really great book and I'm very nearly done it but uh, you can get this on Amazon and do, where is there anywhere else for Tanya oh, it's, on, it's on Kindle now too my Kindle. son my son got it on Kindle what would I do without him I nothing but I want to tell you one more thing before we we end sure, right. the, the first part of my growing up in the refugee camps and my father. I am now making a movie of it because it's, it's a one-person show. Right, you mentioned my, that. My, yeah. my friend Leon Jusen is directing it. Now, we we, we plan to direct because I've got to memorize the whole thing. I've got about a third of it memorized. So in December or m maybe beginning of January, we want to film it. We've been, we filmed the first 15 minutes of it oh. to test it, just to test the angles and because we want to do three cameras because you're doing, you know, one woman oh, person. Yeah. So, so that is, we, we are filming with no money. So wish us luck. We have, we, we don't <laughs> have any money. Uh, this is the story of being an actor. So we're, yeah. my, my sweet accountant just told me, Britannia, let me, let me give you something. This is my accountant. It's like, you know, <laughs> I, I just got the message this morning because I, 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 and he said, you know, uh, let me give you something. And I thought, I'm, he's been my accountant for 42 years, the nicest person, nicest human being. But all of a sudden he said, well, so we'll have some money. Maybe we'll have $500 to start our little piggy bank journey to uh, making this movie. But it's a good story. I've worked on it, worked on it for years. And I spent the whole summer rewriting it for um, for a film because I took a lot of pages out. It's a very, it's very compact mm -hmm. now, the story. So... Uh, Hopefully we'll get it. We will get it on filmed on no budget budget. Yeah. yeah. It, it well, if it's just you, that it, I mean, you can do that for very yeah very cheap. So yeah. With, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's that's my my project. That's really my uh, my uh, what do you call it when you? I think my your final, your, your, my your passion final, project. My <laughs> final my final curtain project. Yeah. Uh, my passion project, yeah. Right. My, my legacy, my legacy. You're like, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, well, keep us posted uh, yes. about that. And, and also the book on Barbara Loden. I, I'd love to yeah, read that. Yeah. As, well. as soon as I, because I've, I've got, a, I've got at least 70, 80 pages already. And nice. I'll, I'm going to, oh. I'm going to go to my acting notes and make that a special uh, chapter just on the acting notes. You'll love that. You, a lot of my acting Oh, notes. yeah. And, um, uh, yeah. So as soon as I finish the film, then that's my next project. Oh, um, fantastic. You've got your work cut out for you. That's, so, yeah. many <laughs> been, so many things have been written about Barbara that are not true. They're just not true. They're made up like she's. Oh. It's, it's, it's so it, at least you'll get the, the truth of somebody that knew her and loved, yeah. her, loved her. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Thank you. Um, thank you. And, and thank thank you so much again. And yes, thank you thank for you. those those of you who have uh, tuned in today. Thank you so much for watching. If this is your first time on our channel, or if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing by clicking the subscribe button, which you can find in our description box 
below and we do three uh, movie review videos a week. And every Thursday we do a live uh, video with a guest. Uh, and next next week we have a another YouTuber, film YouTuber to talk uh, similar as what we did today uh, about the new Hollywood movement, which is the late 60s and 70s, how the industry had changed so much and why that is with uh, a, a man, man by the name of Nathan Jones, who's a, a a movie YouTuber, a similar channel uh, as ours. So thank you so much, Ritanya, again. Yes, thank you, Ritanya. I see Jimmy Dean behind you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> show, her, show her the other one, Steve. Oh, yeah, the other one is... The other one. That's Faye Dunaway. Oh, wow. She was a beauty. Wasn't she a beauty? She was oh, she was, yeah. Bonnie and Clyde Faye Dunaway, yeah. Yeah, yeah she's a beauty. Okay. Well, I love you guys, and thank you so much. Well, thank you. Yeah, so thank, much. You. Okay. thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye. All right. Thank see you. you later.